around the world, locally, with family and friends. And to those viewing for the first time, the House of Destiny International Ministries presents Dr. Larry Manley with today's message designed to create a spiritually vibrant connection between our listeners and God. We hope you will enjoy this presentation and above all, we pray you will be blessed. And I've learned over my 68 years of life that we always know more than we are able to perform. Would you agree with that? We always know more than we are able to perform. Let's go to the book of Second Chronicles, the 20th chapter. <coughs> Second Chronicles, <clears throat> the 20th chapter. We're going to start with verses 1 through 3. Verse 1 says, And it came to pass after this also, that the children of Moab and the children of Ammon, with them and others beside the Ammonites, came against Jehoshaphat to battle. Jehoshaphat means God's judgment. So here you've got these incestual nations, that's prodigies of Lot, with others coming against God's judgment, here seen as Jehoshaphat, king of Israel. Then there came some that told Jehoshaphat, saying, There cometh a great multitude against thee from beyond the sea on this side, Syria. Syria means exalted. See, they're exalting themselves against the judgment of God. And behold, they be in Hazazon, Tamar, uh, which is to divide and take your wealth. You see, that's what the enemy wants to do. It wants to divide us and it wants to take our wealth. Amen? Amen. And look here, it says that, And they be in Hazazon Tamar, which is in Engendai. Engendai is a place of the desert. And that's where he wants to leave us. He wants to take our wealth and place us in a drought situation, a desert, a dry place. All right? And Jehoshaphat, look at here, remember last week I told you fear and doubt will bring immobilization. But Jehoshaphat feared and set himself to seek the Lord. See, he went to the Lord. And he proclaimed the flask a fast throughout all Judah, which is praise. Now, go to verse 14. Verse 14 tells us that Then upon Jehaziel, the son of Zechariah, the son of Benaniah, the son of Jeel, the son of Mattaniah, a Levite of the sons of Asaph, came the Spirit of the Lord in the midst of the congregation. God always has a prophet in the bunch. And he said, Hearken ye all Judah, and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem, and thou King Jehoshaphat. He's telling all of them to listen. And thus saith the Lord unto you. He said, Be not afraid, nor dismayed, by reason of this great multitude. For the battle is not yours, but it's God. He says, The battle is not yours, but it's God. Sometimes we try to fight these battles ourselves. We don't do so well. Verse 17 says, You should not need to fight in this battle. He says, Set yourselves and stand ye still. See, that's another thing we got to do. We got to need, be, we'll deal with that later, being still. And see the salvation of the Lord with you, O Judah and Jerusalem. Fear not, nor be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them, for the Lord will be with you. When did he say go? Did he say go right then? 
No, he said, go tomorrow. In the state that you were in then, you were in a state of fear. But in your next season, God says, I'm going to take you to another level where you're not in fear. So, don't go there now, but go there tomorrow in your next season. And he said, tomorrow go against them and the Lord will be with you. See, the Lord can't be with you when you're in fear. Verse 20 says, And they rose early in the morning and went out forth in the wilderness of Tekoa. And as they went forth, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Judah, and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God. So yet shall you be established. Alright? But believe in his prophets, so shall you prosper. There's two things here. The word of God will establish you. The word of the prophet will cause you to profit, prosper if you listen. Believe the prophet. And if it's a real one, I'm not talking about no jack leg. I'm talking about the real deal. And you'll prosper. A lot of people, egos get in the way, D. And when your ego get in the way, you don't want to listen to the prophet. Because you think you know. But that's not the order of God. God said, look, if you... Allow the word of God to establish you and believe what the prophet is telling you because what the prophet is telling you is coming from up high. Then you'll prosper. The church and the people in the church, we don't have no space for egotistical people because that's what causes churches to be in the condition that they're in. You say, now, you, you, you got to do this now. Because this battle is not yours. So you're going to have to go by the instructions. Verse 22 goes on to tell us that, and, and, and verse 21 goes on to tell us, and when he had consulted with the people, he appointed singers unto the Lord. Look what he did. And that should do what? Praise the beauty of his holiness. As they went forth before the army. And to say praise the Lord for his mercy endures forever. You see what they did? Before you go to war, praise always goes out front. Amen. Amen. And we're going to deal with seven levels of praise today. Because we have to deal with that issue too. I wish some more people were here today that should be here so they can hear this. Hope they're listening online because I'm going to throw it out there. And when, verse 22 says, and when they began to sing and to praise, look here, the Lord set an ambush. All they had to do was praise Him. That's all they had to do. Just give God His glory. And He set an ambush. Mm Mm-hmm. Against the children of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, which were come against Judah. See, it's trying to come against your praise. And they were smitten. You see, when these incestuous nations came up against God's praise, they ran up on an ambush. Praise will turn into worship. Praise and worship are two different things. Praise is like foreplay. Aren't we the bride of Christ? Before a man gets ready to make love to a woman, we're all ducks in here, he should have some type of foreplay to get her attention. Am I right about it, ladies? Y- y'all grown. Amen. Praise is the foreplay of us to God. Get his attention. Then comes worship. 
Because God inhabits the praises of his people. When he inhabits it, it becomes worship. When worship is in place, that means God is consummating with your soul. He's making love to you. He's putting seeds of eternal gifts in you. Amen? You see the difference between the two? They are not the same. Do not ever quantify praise with worship. Worship is a deeper level. Praise gets his attention. Worship, he inhabits us. And he begins to do things in us. Amen? Amen. All right. Now, have you got any more of those papers to get those young ladies? Thank you. Now, let's go to the book of Judges, 20, verse 18. The book of Judges, 20, 18. Got a lot to cover. Going to cover it quick. Put Judges up there, 20, 18. It says, And the children of Israel arose and went up to the house of God and asked counsel of God and said, which of us shall go up first to the battle against the children of Benjamin? Now they're in a civil war against their own people. That's bad when you're in a civil war. Get your own people. Churches are in civil wars within themselves, divided. It says here, and said, which of us shall go up first to the battle against the children of Israel? And the Lord said, Judah which means praise, shall go first. Amen? Amen. Here it is. Praise always go before the battle. Amen? You don't put the army before praise. You don't do that. Praise comes first when you're in this battle. Now, let's deal with the hidden messages of all of this. First of all, the 12 tribes of Israel, correct? Correct. And that's a hidden message in that. It's a spiritual message in it. And what God is saying here is 12 is the divine purpose of God in man. That's why that number 12, that's why those numbers, those different numbers in the Bible, they mean something very important. 12 is the divine purpose of God in man. Now the first one, if you look on your paper, you'll see is Reuben, right? Reuben means see a son. Which points to Jesus Christ. Here in Hebrew is known as Yeshua. Amen. The second one is Simeon. Which means, or Simon. Which means hearing. And it means to hear the son or the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. Then you've got Levi. Levi means to be joined together. Referring to the union by which the set-apart spirit makes us one with the Son through the hearing of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen? The next one you got is Judah. Judah is a divine strategy of warfare. Are you with me? Judah means praise. It's the response of the redeemed upon being joined to Christ. And becoming regenerated spiritually or born from above. When we're born again, we should give praise to God. But there are different levels of praise and we're going to deal with that. Dan means judgment. The believer, though worthy of judgment for his sin or her sins, has passed from judgment to life through the atoning blood of Jesus Christ. Yehoshua. Amen. The next one is Nephali. It means to wrestle. This speaks of the believer's life as he struggles against the world, his flesh, his or her flesh, and the devil endeavoring to walk righteously. So as we attempt to walk righteously, we got the world coming at us. We've got our own selves, flesh coming at us, and we got the devil coming at us. And the more we try to do right, the harder he fights us. And quite frankly, 
The Bible says that in the book of Revelation and in the book of Daniel that he's going to wear the same south. But the saints still going to be victorious because we're hid in Christ. So we ain't got to worry about how tired we are. Just keep walking. Keep believing. You know, you're not going to be at your best all the time. You know, and even if you are at what you call your best, the Bible says a man in his best state is altogether vanity. So whatever we think about ourselves, it ain't nothing but vanity to God. It's a trickster. Gad is a troop, a company. This speaks of the fellowship of believers in the household of faith. And the result of the fellowship, this is, is Asher. That's another tribe, which means happiness. See, fellowship among the brethren causes us to be happy with each other. See, I feel good when I come and I fellowship with the people. When I don't, which is, you know, I got to be real bad off, you know. Because sickness, tiredness, and nothing else keeps me from doing my job. I don't care. I don't care. Y'all seen me drag, limp, and do everything else, but I do my job. And I thank y'all for doing you all. Because I know that as human beings, we don't always feel like it, but we don't walk by sight. We walk by faith. In other words, we don't walk by how we feel. There's a whole lot of things I don't feel like doing. Like getting up at 4 o'clock in the morning. and feel like it. But I got to get up. Amen? <clears throat> then there is Issachar. Issachar means to hire. Once a part of the spiritual body of believers, one is equipped for works of service in advancing the kingdom of God, Elohim, as a bond server. Y'all know what a bond server is? That's a slave. That's somebody who do work and don't get paid for it. Like me. Like you. Like Brenda. See, we don't get paid for doing this. Other preachers do, but we've been doing this how long? 20 years here at House of Death? Almost. And y'all don't pay us. We do this because we work for God. And God will take care of us. He always has. If he, he's always doing it. He's going to continue to do it. And I ain't worried about money. I'm worried about my soul. That's what I'm in a battle for. Not a battle to make some money. Money come and go. And money don't make you. You make it. Are you the same person with no money in your pocket as you are with thousands of dollars or millions of dollars in your pocket or billions or even trillions? Will money change you? Will money cause you to sell your soul? Well, because you want to make money, it keeps you from doing the will of God and keeping you from being on post because you want to make, because you want to do what you want to do. No, this is just real here. This is real. This is not, this is not no game. This is real. We got to meet the maker one day. Lord knows. Lord knows we got. And we don't know what it is we're running into. Ain't got the face. We don't. I don't have time to play up here. I ain't playing with you, and I ain't playing with me. Zebulon. Zebulon is a dwelling place, exalted in honor. We are to occupy here on earth until Christ comes again, while we honor and exalt him before the Gentiles. Amen? Because we are Israel. Joseph means to add. It can refer to adding to the body of believers in Christ through outreach or the rewards of God, Y-H-V-H, I'm going to get you to understand that in a minute. God's eternal kingdom for a job well done laboring in God's spiritual field. 
And Benjamin is the son of my right hand, which is reference to Christ who sits at the right hand of God. And to believers who are seated with Christ in heavenly places by faith. Now let's look at this YHVH. This is the way Hebrews would, the, 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 the priest, the high priest was the only one who was able to pronounce those letters. Y-H-V-H. And what that means, it's, it's the form of God. What it means is, there are 22 letters in the Hebrew alphabet. Now, the first letter there, that Y, is Yod. It means Yahweh, God. The H is He. It means Holy Spirit. The V means Va which means pin to the sun. And the other H on the end of that is another H, which is the spirit that's in us. So what this is, is God, Y, Holy Spirit, H, pins the sun, Jesus Christ, V, to our spirit, H. Y, H, V, H. Have you got it? I know I'm throwing a lot of stuff out here, but I'm going to throw it. Now, what this all means, combine the names and they tell the following story. Now I will praise God. Surely God has looked upon my afflictions. What good fortune. Happy am I with great wrestlings, Nephali, have I wrestled and I have prevailed. For God, Elohim, the seven spirits around the throne, has made me forget all my toil because God has heard that I was hated. Now this time will my husband be joined unto me, talking about Christ being joined unto the souls of us. Elohim, the seven spirits around the throne that make up God, has given me my wages. Didn't I tell you that God pays us? Elohim has given me my wages. Elohim has endowed me with a good gift. Now my husband will deal with me, and God shall add to me, and shall have, and you shall have this son. Talking about you shall have his son, Jesus Christ. Amen? Now it starts with Yeshua, Jesus Christ, and it ends with him. He is the leaf and the top. Or the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the author and the finisher of our faith. He began this good work in us and he'll finish it, amen? amen. No matter what it looks like. No matter what you go through. And everybody we meet, I always tell y'all, is going through something. Ain't no need in trying to judge somebody else. You know, the worst thing I hate is a big mouth gossiper. That's why I don't have that in this church. Because a big mouth gossiper, you know, the Bible says that a, a tail bearer reveals secrets. And some things you need to be able to take to the grave with you about other people. You take it to the grave about yourself. So why do you want to report it to everybody on everybody else? Why don't you report what you're doing? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But you, we catch amnesia sometime on that, don't we? Let's deal with the seven levels of praise. Going back to Judah, which is the divine strategy of warfare. Church, and I hope people listening online today, they need to hear this. Everybody don't praise God the same way. Do you understand that? Nobody has the right to try to tell somebody else how they need to praise God. I'm going to prove it to you in the scripture. That's every individual's business how they praise God. Amen? And the reason why is because God has given us all our own personalities. And our personalities are fitted for our praise. Amen. Amen. 
So I want to take you through the seven levels of praise where you understand and you won't feel convicted when somebody is trying to tell you how you need to praise God. No, you need to hush and praise God the way you praise God and let other people alone and let them praise God. Because I've been in churches where they try to do that. And nobody has that right to try to tell you how you should praise God. So anytime I see something out of whack, you can bet I'm coming back and put it in sync the way it's supposed to be. Through the word of God. There's a whole lot of things I could say, but I don't say nothing until I seek God. I mean, there's a whole lot of things I could say. But is it should I say it? Is it the right time to say it? It's time or place to talk, and it's time or place to shut up. Everybody want to be seen, and I keep telling you, you're going to be the first one to get shot. You want to be seen? You're going to be the first one. We're in a war. We're in battle. And when you're in an army, like we are in the army of God, the one out front is going to be the first one getting shot. Because that's the first one they see. I don't understand why people want to be seen so much. When you're not capable of handling the bullets that's going to be coming at you. And trust me, there's a whole lot of bullets being shot at preachers. A whole lot of bullets that's over a congregation. The first level of praise is called Tara. Tara. That's Hebrew. It means sacrifice of praise. Somebody go with me to, and they'll have it on the monitor. Go with me to Hebrews 13, 15. Put that up there, son. Watch this. The first level of praise. By him, therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God. See, it's the sacrifice to praise God. Continually. That is the fruit of our lips giving thanks to his name. Okay? That's one level of praising God. The next level is yada. Yada means raised hands. Some people praise God with their hands raised up. Have y'all seen them do that? Amen. 